it's not a really windy day here but <clears throat> this is the trailer that I bought with my boat of course the, the boat is now on the uh, the lift and what I discovered when I took the, oops when I took the trailer I mean the boat off the trailer is that this is a broken spring all these springs look pretty shitty actually but this one is busted so I hardly will use the trailer at all but when I use the trailer it needs to be at least safe so I ordered um, springs to, for this axle to do this side and the other side and that's what I'm planning on doing today is putting a new uh, new spring on this side and the other side you can see how rusted everything is of course this gets back down into salt water and um, I got new u-bolts uh, the plate here seems to be in pretty good shape I was worried that if I took these off that they're, they're I, I've soaked these it with uh, PB blaster which is supposed to melt away the or help melt away the the uh, rust but um, I don't know we'll see how that works and I'm gonna stop at wind chime it's making so much noise it's it's really windy today I don't know why but anyway so that's the plan PB blaster. This is a penetrating catalyst, and it's supposed to get into. I, it actually does help, but and I've coated all this stuff before. But you know, this stuff is like rusted solid. And what ha, what I find is that these cans, after a while, if, if you've had them a long time, sometimes they lose their gas, and then the, the, all you have is liquid inside. So what I've done is instead of throwing that out, I open them up like this and put a little brush in here. All you're doing is, you know, getting it on your the, uh, the joints between the nuts or whatever that you're trying to take off. So it's the same type situation. And I've already done this several times, but you know, I'm not expecting that it's going to be an easy means of getting this thing off. I might end up having to cut this instead. I, I've got new, new bolts for this. I'm going to get the other side too. Oh, man. All right. Let's see if this is going to come easy or if it's going to come hard. That is a monster of a of a uh, 
impact gun. So that those came out <laughs> much easier than I thought it was going to be. the bolt that was in there still looks to be in pretty good shape needs to be cleaned up maybe to be, be reused but I think I have some stainless ones which I replace these with we're gonna cut these here's the uh, the angle grinder and these are the nuts the uh, bolts rather with the, with the new nuts I don't remember if I if these might be stainless they, they may or may not be I'm not sure I can't remember it really doesn't matter but replace that so I'm just going to cut these all right Have, these are uh, instead of reusing these bolts here I have these are left over from my bolt that I think these are stainless these obviously are not so I'm going to use these I might as well because I have them this is uh, these are 
this is half inch 13 thread. Just like this. Put that up there. The springs are rated at uh, I think 1750 pounds each. Or maybe the pair, I guess it may be 1750 pounds. Yeah, see, I'm off just, but just by a little bit, but if we were to bolt this up, that flattens that spring out a little bit, too. And this is kind of wonker, wonky here. So maybe... The other, the other axle on the other side is the same way as this, you know, cocked at an angle a little bit, Let's see. So I'm not going to try to straighten that out, apparently that makes everything equal. I'm just going to try to get this all back in place, I'm going to have to I think, move the shackle here. plate, this plate here. To get this this bolt here lined up with that oh shit with that hole. today is uh, this is my this is a trailer for my boat which is now in the lift but you know still I need the trailer and the trailer needs to be serviceable so over the course of time I need to upgrade some of the stuff but one of the things that was a problem and I didn't even re realize it because of course being the boat on top of it and, and there was no outward, outward uh, evidence of some problem was that the spring was broken 
So, um, of course, me, I came out and I said, well, that's no big deal. How wide is the spring? And you measure inside the shackles here was inch and three quarters. Okay, not a problem. And then uh, you measure center to center. <clears throat> from the center of the bolt here to the center of the bolt there. And I measured 26 inches. So I went looking for a spring and then I figured that this 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 uh, trailer, you know, the boat weighs 4,000 pounds. Um, it's probably double that. So 2,000 in axle, two, four, six, 8,000 pounds that the thing could take. That's your, your double, um, factor of safety and then I thought okay so I, I went looking for a spring and what I ended up finding was everything was 25 and 3 quarters 25 and 3 quarters 25 and 3 quarters or no 25 and a quarter 25 and a quarter 25 and a quarter 25 and a quarter so I said well you know if this obviously the uh, the boat has been on here a long time and maybe the springs relaxed a little bit and if you took took that that uh, arc you'd make the arc go down this way and that would make your 26 inches so it's no big deal all right so i'll get the 25 and a quarter springs and i'll put them in so the the spring came and i i mounted it here i mounted it over there's u-bolts that go over the top here and then um, there was a U-bolt in place over here, and I said, well, I, I could not get enough slack where I could get the bolt through this shackle into this uh, eye bolt, or eye. And I thought, there's gotta be something wrong here. Let me uh, loosen this up, and I'll just move this into position by beating the hell out of it with a hammer. Well, what I didn't notice is that this, will, this was up like this before. There's actually a strap across the bottom here where these these shackles are welded into place. There's there are 26 inches, that's what it is. You have to have a 26 inch spring. So ultimately I ordered, I said, okay, let me order one 26 inch spring for over here, which I did. And they sent me one which was 25 and three quarters and I sent it back, obviously. So now I have I bought two springs because I figured you had to change them in pairs. So I have this one, and it's very clearly 26 inches. They're center to center, 26 inches. So that's that's critical. If you should do your trailer, make sure that you don't have anything like this in your situation. So anyway, it's 26 inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount the spring today. And, uh, and then I'll probably do the other side. I have to cut all that stuff loose. In the meantime, I ordered some, some stuff here. Oh, so to take the other springs off, which now I've had too long and I can't return, so I've got to sell on, uh, on Facebook Marketplace or, or Craigslist or something, um, which are 25 and 3 quarters, is um, in order to get it off, I had a brand new stainless um, bolt, nut, and washer set, and I brand new. And I put the wrench on here, and I put my my uh, ratchet on, and I went to take this off, and the thing would not come off. So. There's a lesson to be learned here, which I didn't know about, and, and I should know. I mean, I'd never heard of it before, but uh, it's, a, it's a phenomena called galling. Now, aluminum stuff that's soft, you can gall. Okay, but um, I never thought stainless was subject to that. But in fact, what happens are, are two things. Number one, the threads on bolts like this, they, they don't cut. They roll them. There's a set of dies that come in and they crush the metal into this shape. And um, so it's, they, and they displace that metal and it also hardens the, hardens the, uh, uh, the metal. Okay. Nuts, obviously they can't, they can't um, roll, so they cut. 
So they drill a hole through it, a little bit smaller than the final diameter of the thread, and then they run a, a tap through it. So now you have two different styles of thread, even though they, they match in physical size. But they say specifically, and I actually watched a video on uh, uh, a manufacturer of stainless steel hardware who's, who says, do not use impact tools or you know anything fast in order to put these things in place because the heat will actually create a problem with galling. So, and they also recommended that every time you put stainless fasteners together, um, that you need to put uh, anti-seize on the threads before you put it together, which is interesting because I actually had a similar problem out on the boat lift when I was putting it together and moving stuff around and changing things. And I had another one that, same thing, it, 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 it actually, the nut was frozen on there and it was not coming off and it didn't matter what I did to it. I ended up leaving the bolt in place and I, I wanted to turn it around, but I leave, left the bolt in place and cut off the end, which solved my problem anyway. So I didn't have to replace that. But I, when I came out here to take off the spring, that nut was not coming off of there. And I mean, I put, I locked the, the head of the bolt, which was on the outside, in place, and I put a, uh, you know, a, a good long wrench on there, and I stood on it. So you know, I'm no light boy, <laughs> and I, I ended up twisting this half-inch stainless steel nut in or a bolt in half, and the, and the nut was locked on there. I ended up throwing out the the nut and cutting off the bolt to a usable length. It actually twisted it and, and, and bent it. And I cut it to a usable length and I uh, chamfered the, the end so that it can be used again for some other purpose. It's only like half the length now. Th these are four inch bolts, by the way. So anyway, that's something to be aware of anyway. So it's a learning lesson because I learned it. And um, so I'm sharing with you what I know. So um, that's today. I'm gonna put this spring in because this has been sitting here now for weeks um, and it, I can't sit here anymore I want to have it at least usable in the event that I need. This is some. This is a Permatex Anti-Seize Lubricant number eight zero zero seven one. This, if you buy a, a tube of this stuff, it lasts a lifetime. And also, it's messy as hell if you get it on yourself. But it's uh, it lasts a long time. And I wanted to just make sure that I do whatever I can to prevent uh, a problem in the future. Should I need to redo these springs again sometime? You know, I, I mean, you can always cut them off, I suppose. But I'm just saying. There's a uh, whoops. There's a a nut and bolt that goes through. The bolt goes through, and the nuts on the bottom. Show you what I got. <laughs> uh, golly, golly, golly! All right. So there's the plate. There's a hole in the bottom to accommodate the head of the bolt that's through the um, spring, and then there's these two U bolts. This is a two-inch axle. These have two and a sixteenth clearance to the inside. Um, they're half-inch. 13 thread. There's locking nuts like this on three of them. The fourth one, for whatever, whatever reason, I just couldn't get started right. I was getting it cross-threaded, so I put a regular, I had a regular nut out here. I have a couple extra regular nuts also, but 
uh, flat washers on all of them just as a thing and it's the same thing over here I have I have a uh, the bolt from the back I have a, a flat washer a um, lock washer a nut and the same thing over there and now I'm just going to tighten everything up and th this side should be done hopefully hopefully who knows Thank <laughs> you. 